Yeah, absolutely. Um, as I've just said to the guys in there, uh, in a two-legged affair, there's a lot of ground that can be covered in the first leg. And the side that went out gave the group tonight a very good platform to, to go and um, express themselves and to play with confidence. And it was a very um, genuine, professional and fulfilling job tonight. Um, there are a number of guys in that group that have made their debuts or are getting minutes that they may well not have done before, but that is uh, a roster. That is um, the strength of a group. And tonight, I think we've, we've completed the task, knowing what we had waiting in the background with Miami. Um, I think that was a huge incentive. And we'll now look forward to Thursday week when I do believe that we host Miami here and that will be a hell of a game. First, yeah. Hey Gary, um, you're playing Inter Miami and Messi for the third time now in the very short time he's been in this country. Um, I mean, obviously it's based on luck and how things kind of came out, but well, have you learned anything from the first couple of times playing them? Uh, you haven't lost to them in 90 minutes yet, so I'm sure you're doing something right. But have you learned anything from the first two experiences that will help you in this third one? Uh, what I have learned is he's very, very good. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, look, there's, there's uh, some additions to that group that we haven't seen, of course. Um, I, I've no doubt in these early stages of the season, both teams will be looking and thinking, you know, we'll be in a much different place in probably six, eight, ten games time. But at this point, the biggest influence for us on the game will be to get some of our attacking players back in the group. I think that will give everyone a lift and a boost um, against a team that, uh, you know, we all know are extremely talented. And, and very, very capable. Over two legs, there'll be some challenges and maybe some plans to, to try and lay, um, you know, to, to make sure that we're either in a good position or in a competitive one as we go into that second leg. But, you know, I'm not worried too much about that at the moment. We have a game in between and, like I say, the health of, of some of the group is, is going to have a big influence on, on how we turn out next Thursday. Gary, um, we, we saw a couple of players make their debuts today. Um, two in particular, um, Forster Jago, obviously, with, with his goals, and then Amar Sadich came on at halftime and, and offered a lot, I thought, for midfield. Um, what, what can you say about those two guys? And, and um, You talk a lot about wanting competition in different areas of the field. Do you expect those guys to – have they made kind of a case to be included more going forward? Well, I think uh, Amar's an easy one, you know. Amar's got – tremendous experience in MLS full stop and he was a, a very nice addition to the group um, different to a couple of players that we have in the group in that midfield area an excellent technician um, you know a very good reader of the game and a good connector so you know delighted for Amar in all honesty the reason he didn't start was because there were a lot of changes in the group that I had to make and I wanted to be sure that we could get through a good period of the game in, in good order. But as I say, Amar, Amar's been a, a really nice addition to the group and settled in very well. Forster's slightly different in the fact that he is an international. Um, at this moment in time, the Champions Cup is the only competition that he can play in. However, circumstances can change, of course. And I think the, the lad has done a, an awful lot for himself tonight and put himself on the map. He's been brilliant for the group. Um, and, and I don't care what game you play in, as a young man, if you're scoring and threatening the goal, then there's something there. And, and it's something to be excited about. So, uh, you know, we're really pleased to have him in the group. He had a wonderful pre-season. And, you know, circumstances have been such that he gets his chance maybe a little bit earlier than he might have done. And he's taken it, you know, in, in both hands. So that's brilliant. Sort of along those lines, you see not just 
Forster for the first time, but uh, Brent and Julian and just overall, how much better are you feeling about your squad depth tonight as opposed to 24 hours ago? Yeah, I think we always knew and felt that there were guys in the group that were capable. Um, there's been some nice additions, certainly in and around the group in, in the off-season. Um, I think those guys as well needed some minutes and, and the circumstances evolved and, and uh, were created in, in a, a pretty decent fashion for some of the fellas to get a good 90 minutes under their belt now. Um, as, as I'd spoken about with Valère, I think the front line and the attacking players are, are my only concern at the moment. You know, we, we missed Tyler again tonight after a knock at the weekend. Hanny's still working in his way through uh, a little bit of an issue. Um, Sam, likewise, Randall's out for a little bit longer. You know, there's a lot of talent there that, um, that, that was unavailable to us tonight. So, uh, you know, very, very pleased with Mackenzie and Jacob's um, contributions tonight along, of course, with Alex and, and Forster, who we've already spoken about. I thought Alex's display in a more attacking role was, was excellent tonight. You know, a real, real professional and, and uh, um, experienced display, I thought. So, uh, very pleasing. On those lines, um, when you mentioned uh, Alex as an example, uh, how many other guys you saw, like, they were that you could say, well, hold on, I can actually make him perform in this different position or in this different uh, attacking or defending way tonight. What did you learn from the team, even uh, after an unbalanced game like tonight? Well, I think, look, I, I think I always probably knew that Alex is capable of playing in that role. Um, you know, we, we, we must be realistic about what, we've run into tonight. And I think the guys have done a very, very good job. It, it could have been really tricky and a lot more challenging tonight if the guys hadn't been as, as positive and as focused as they were. So to that degree, you know, I'm very, very pleased. I've said that, you know, a number of times. The challenge against MLS groups and more competitive teams presents a far different um, perspective for some of the players that we're speaking about tonight. What I will say is this, a victory in that manner is a big confidence boost for the individuals. Um, I've spoken to Alex about his display in there. It was very, very good tonight. And he was disappointed he didn't get on the score sheet. He, you know, you could see that he was very keen to, uh, you know, to, to try and hit the back of the net tonight. Um, Yes, moving forward, it's a possibility. Um, and I do think there are some really good habits that are starting to form. Clean sheets being one of them. I don't think it matters what competition, who you're playing against or, 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 or what um, you know, challenge you have. Keeping clean sheets is a good habit to have. And whilst you know, it was a different challenge at the weekend, We've scored seven goals in, in three games. Um, again, being realistic about who we're playing and, and what that means. But I think that's a boost for everyone. And we go into the weekend's game in, uh, you know, in a good place and, and some changes to be had again towards the weekend. And I'm hoping with a little bit more runway towards Thursday's game, that there'll be a little bit more recovery. Some of those guys will get themselves back into a competitive spot. And um, yeah, who knows? You know, two legs with Miami, that, that'll be very exciting. Uh, Gary, I'm repeating this, yeah. Uh, uh, Gary, I guess, um, with, you know, Lionel Messi coming up next week and, you know, and the Champions Cup round 16, I guess, how do you make sure that for now, for the next two, three days, your focus is on, you know, playing at Colorado? And I guess in, in addition to that, I guess, what have you seen, what have you gotten the chance to see out of the Rapids so far? And what are you preparing and expecting out of them? 
Well, I think first and foremost, we're early on in the season. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys that need to get 90 minutes under their belt regularly. Um, for them to feel as though the season's really underway. So I don't think um, I'll have too many problems in pulling the guys into focus for the weekend. Um, we, we certainly need to make sure we're adding points to the board as often as we can in these early stages of the season, albeit with you know, a very appetising two-legged affair against Miami coming up. As far as Colorado are concerned, I, I, I actually thought, I watched the game at the weekend, um, and I thought, you know, the early stages of the Portland game, Portland were ultimately so clinical. I'm not sure they had more than three shots and were three nil up at half time. But what you saw was a team, you know, with a real cutting edge in Portland. Um, you know, maybe Phil's, um, you know, personality and, and um, the way that he's, he's driven that team on. Certainly for their first and, and uh, opening game at home, you could see that there was an appetite and an edge to the team. In some ways, it maybe is not a good time to play Colorado at home. They'll want to they'll want to try and reverse that scoreline for sure. Um, so I'm expecting a real challenging game. And I think early on in the season anyway, you should always expect that you're going to see a little bit of a bounce back from teams. Gary, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Gary, on a lighter note, uh, back in 2017, well, let's start with this. Uh, Walker Zimmerman was asked last game about team bonding or, in th this past offseason. Uh, back in 2017, Claudio Ranieri, when he was with Leicester City, uh, awarded his team when they had clean sheets with a pizza party. Do you have some something up your sleeve this season with uh, in regards to clean sheets? The, the straightforward answer is no. I don't, and uh, it, that sounds um, sounds interesting. A pizza party, um, but look, what, what, whatever it takes, you know. Um, what I do know is, you know, there are a couple of things that are going on in the locker room that have not happened before. That you know, the guys had an already spirited and um, you know very close locker room. I think is is. Uh, is showing some other uh, elements and galvanising themselves into um, what I hope will be a very competitive season again. But, you know, five years in now, I think there are some, uh, I think there are one or two angles that the guys, along with, you know, some support off the field in the preseason, have, uh, you know, have seen as, as maybe a nice way to, to reward people in the locker room. I'll go, I'm not going into it any more than that. Um, but it seems to me that it will stay in the locker room and not to the local pizza parlour. That concludes tonight's press conference with Coach Gizmi. Congratulations on moving on, sir. And, Thank you. Uh, we'll see you next <laughs> time. Uh, so uh, obviously, uh, get your debut goal. Uh, well, first goal, uh, I should say. Uh, for Nashville FC, but I, I I know somebody here will ask you about this, but how does it feel to play with your brother on the pitch? Oh, unbelievable. Uh, it was so cool. The moment he was subbed in, I was like smiling here to here. Just because like, I mean, how cool is it that I get to play with my own brother on the same field, right? Uh, I thought he was going to score, which would have made it even cooler. I think Walker asked me like last week, like how many times brothers have gotten to the score sheet in the same game. Can't answer that, but it would have been really cool. But no, it was awesome. I'm sure my parents were the static on the couch tonight. <laughs> <Bad>. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. Um, especially in the second half, it felt like everything was running down the right side and, and you had plenty of like really dangerous crosses into the box. Just what did you feel like was working for you guys? And, and for a lot of guys, you haven't really played together um, in competitive matches before. How did you feel like you guys did just building chemistry pretty quickly? Yeah, I thought we were great. Like you said, we. I mean, this is our third competitive match now. Yeah. Um, it's come quick, but I think that we had a nice solid preseason and we got to you know, know each other's tendencies pretty quickly. To um, so your point, I think that the ball did come out wide right, and I think that it was something that Gary kind of emphasized before the game and uh, leaned up to it. He kind of wanted to play through the wing through me and Schaff. Uh, in the second half, uh, it was just one of those things where the ball kept coming to me and 
uh, put it in the box, try to make something happen. Uh, and yeah, I thought that uh, I think that we played well uh, through both of the legs. I think it was a really professional performance for uh, the entire team, not only tonight but also in Mocha. And yeah, just happy to uh, next the next round. Yeah. Jacob. Yeah. Uh, Mackenzie, um, Barry talked a lot during the preseason about how he wanted the preseason to, be, to really be leading up and get you guys, you know, in game shape, you know, fit for you know, such a tough stretch, you know, with eight, eight games, you know, and a little over three weeks open the season. I guess how do you feel, how much do you feel that's paying off now? Yeah, it's paying off immensely. Um, preseason is probably one of the hardest times of the year just because, you know, there's so much work that goes into it. And, um, the great thing is that, you know, you see the benefits of that work later out in the season. And um, I think that we've started off the season strong and we just want to continue on the same note. Um, I think that you did a great job, you know, preparing the team for what was ahead. Um, not only physically, but I think mentally. I think it's one of the strongest, you know, teams that I played for in terms of, you know, the mental aspect of it. Um, you saw we didn't underestimate our opponent, not only tonight, but also in Mocha. Um, so I think he's done a great job, you know, preparing us for, you know, the long journey that will be ahead of us. Claudio? Uh, you can't say, um, usually people say, you know, as we have all of the soccer, that players need time to come to a new team, this season, and get adapted, get adapted to everything. But you look like you've been here forever. Is that <laughs> Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> it, it definitely helps whenever you come in, and it's a great locker room. Um, they've, they've welcomed me with open arms, which is great. Um, sometimes, you know, it's it's tough, and um, you don't always get along with everybody that you're playing with, but that's not the case here. Um, everybody's been so welcoming, and they've been so helpful, and um, the coaches have provided me with, you know, some really good instructions and how to get my feet wet and, you know, into the team, so I'm grateful of the way that everybody's you know, welcome here in Nashville. We'll go Nick and then finish with Lucas. So, you guys on the team, first of all, you have anybody that's kind of gravitating towards the training and kind of helped motivate you throughout this early part of the season? Uh, I mean, there are a few names, you know, it's a, it's a really good team. Um, I think that you want to, I mean, as a player, take bits and pieces from everybody's game. Obviously, you have Hani, who's been there. He's been MVP, scores a bunch of goals, gets a bunch of assists. So, you know, just seeing how he operates on a daily basis. Um, obviously, Shaft's played with Canada. Tyler's capped with the United States. Walker's played in the World Cup. So, you know, it's a really deep roster, really talented for us. And so, you know, I'm very lucky to be here and to be able to, you know, compare myself and compete with them on a daily basis and, you know, take little bits and pieces from all the teams. This early in your career, have you ever started a campaign with this congested of a schedule? Seven games in 21 days. And what have you kind of learned about how to approach that? Or is it kind of just business as usual? You're just playing games instead of training. Like, what's been the biggest adjustment for you? No, never in my life have I played so many games in such a small stretch, especially like right off the bat. You know, um, it's kind of tough because, you know, preseason the part where you, you build fitness and you kind of take that in as the season goes and it's kind of a ramp up. But, you know, we've kind of had to start high and um, kind of maintain that throughout the, the first week of our play. Um, something that, like I said, I've never done before, but um, you know, I think that everybody's doing a good job in how they're, you know, approaching these matches, approaching training. I think that everybody's, you know, putting their best foot forward and trying to stay fit through all this stuff. Um, so, you know, it's something that's really fun, you know, being to play matches. And all right, for sure. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations on scoring your first, well, making your debut to start with and scoring twice. Um, I mean, how does it feel? With that. I mean, yeah, first of all, the time goes for the opportunity, and uh, as to how it feels, you know, it's, it's amazing, it's nice, you want to score in front of the fans, and as a debut, I mean, it's, it's awesome, I mean, and just, I can't say much, but just be grateful for the opportunity for, any, for everything, yeah. Ben? Yeah, I mean, first of all, when did you find out you were, you were starting, and kind of what was your initial reaction, um, and then how did it how did you imagine it going and then how did it play out? I mean, um, as to whether I was starting, I think it was um, yesterday. That was when I knew I was starting. But initially, um, I, talk, I mean, coach kind of told me, hey, you might be on the bench and um, we will see how things go. But as to whether I started, it was yesterday. And um, I mean, going to video and see that you're going to start, uh, it's always a dream to play and you want to play as a player. but. You know, you kind of get that nervousness. Um, the first time, it's, it's going to be a debut, and I think yesterday was a bit hard. To be honest, those who were, who were practice saw it, 
But the guys got together, got my confidence high, told me, hey, you're gonna be great. Just keep doing what you're doing, keep it simple. And I don't really did, it truly be up. So I think, yeah. We're gonna have a line again, Claudia. Uh, obviously, every player wants to play the biggest game next. Uh, when you were looking at this game yesterday, like you're telling us, did you uh, visualize your game being as good as it was tonight? Oh yeah, I mean, I've put in a lot of hard work. The coaches have done a lot. The players have done a lot. So at the end of the day, um, you always imagine you want to be the you are the best player. So it's like yeah, you wouldn't know how it's going to predict because. We all can predict soccer, but at the end of the day, we are positive. And once you wake up that morning of game day, and you are strong, you are healthy, you have the feeling that yes, this is going to be a good day. So, I mean, I wouldn't say I didn't expect it to be like this, but I mean, coming to the game, I knew confidence wise I was there, and the guys got my back, and I got nothing to lose. So, yeah. Okay. What's the only thing, I don't say looking, but the main thing that kind of motivates you every day when you go into practice? I mean, going into practice, um, I want to play soccer, and now I'm doing it. So it's like I'm happy. This is what I want to do. And um, having a family like Nashville, where the guys are nice, the coaches are fantastic. I can ask for more. The staff are amazing. I want to see them every day and seeing them in the, every morning, smiling in the locker room, talking and being like, "Hey, Foster, hey, Foster," and because they like me, and I think. It keeps me going, and I mean, I got my family, I got friends, but I don't there, it's just a dream, so, yeah. What's the celebration? Can you give us some background? <laughs> ah, yeah, about that, I mean, you know, it's, again, the name Bear, Bear from the celebration, yeah, so, it's kind of like a bear, <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's like clouds, so it's like, for me, it kind of has a bug, a story of like, Coming through the uh, from my beginning, you know, it's like it's been tough, and for me, everything seems to be I have to grab it. So it's kind of like the aggressive mode of me taking out the weeds and clearing the way. You know, I'm the man here, I'm the lion, I'm the bear. So I mean, I'm the bear. So it's kind of yeah, kind of like a struggle out clearing out the weeds, the weak ones, and showing the, the strong ones. So yeah, I love it. Thank That's you. awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. For Thank you.